What's going on guys, Austin Zayback here with another episode of the Austin Zayback Show. Today we have a very special guest on the show by the name of Jamil Damji. If you've never heard of the name, he's the co-founder of Keegly, one of the biggest, arguably the biggest wholesaling company in the entire nation. If you've ever thought about getting into wholesaling real estate, or you already are wholesaling real estate, this is a phenomenal podcast for you. Jamil has franchised Keegley all over the nation, which has never been done before in the wholesaling world. He also built a thing called Astro Flipping, which is a community of real estate wholesalers all over the nation. They have over 5,000 students, and he's also the star of Triple Digit Flip on A&E. This is a phenomenal, phenomenal podcast. So you're going to want to stay to the very end. I appreciate you for watching. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. Foundation of that unconditional love in our family was set, right? Because I messed up. And when you mess up that bad and you like essentially lose your entire family's nest egg and nobody blames you for it, nobody points their finger at you and says you suck, you ruined us. You're like, I never heard that from my mom and dad. I don't know that there's ever a destination. A thing I learned very early is that my idea of what's going to happen and God's idea of what's, what's going on guys, Austin Zayback here with another episode of the Austin Zayback show. Today we have a very special guest, Jamil Damji. What is going on? What brother? Up? Dude, Good to see you again, it's bro. been way too long, it man. It has been a minute. Yeah, yes. we go way back. I don't even remember like probably 2016, 2017, maybe yeah, even around then. I, maybe 2016, I would say is when you and I really connected Josiah and Hunter and you, you guys all used to do Bible study yeah. together, and, and so they have a lot of really fond memories of working with you, and I remember uh, at that time you were doing real estate, we were doing real estate, and we were doing deals together. You would come to my house, and we would talk about shop and just locking stuff up and techniques and tactics that we were all using to try to yeah. get deals under contract it was fun. Dude, it was so much fun, bro. And I love watching what you've done. You know, obviously you've done massive things. I don't even know all of it. You're on A&E now. You've got, you had a TV show. I think you did. You completed season one. We completed season two. Season two. We so. premiere. Actually, you're welcome to uh, come to the premiere party. It's December 3rd. Love to. Um, we'll be uh, doing it big here this year for our, our premiere party. We've got... You're familiar with Tupac, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So Tupac's crew, the Outlaws, they were like my heroes growing up. So they're actually going to come and perform oh at gosh. the premiere party. So that's <laughs> neat, man. Like what a what a trip, right? I got my heroes performing at our television premiere. So we have season two airing December third, and we'll start production of season three here pretty soon. Wow, that's awesome, man. Yeah. I love seeing the journey and what you guys have built at Keegley and Astro Flipping and just everything you guys have done. I'm sure a lot of it I don't even know anymore. Uh, I only see what I see from afar lately because yeah. it's been so well, it's long. it's all out right? there. I, I, yeah. I, my life is no longer uh, hidden. You know, I used to be really private. You know that. Mm -hmm. I wasn't uh, interested in social media. <laughs> and it wasn't – you were the first influencer I ever really knew. You know, you had a following when we had met in 2016. You were like 100,000 subscribers on YouTube and whatnot. So I always knew Austin as somebody that was a content creator. And I wondered how you did it all the time because you have to be on, right? Yeah. And um, – for me, my privacy at the time was really important to me. But as I grew and as I saw just the evolution of the info space, right, and the things that we had accomplished at Keegley, I thought they were important to share. And it, well, actually, I'll be – let me rewind that. I didn't, I didn't necessarily have the insight that it was important to share. It was Brent Daniels mm. who gave me the initial insight that said, Jamil, it's important that you share this with people because this is – this is an incredibly powerful strategy. What you guys have done here is real. I've seen it. I'm watching this all unfold in front of my eyes, and I'd love for other people to understand how this works. And so, funny enough, Brent Daniels was the first guy to put me on like a like a big podcast that did, you know, anything for me in terms of visibility. And then after that, Max Maxwell was the next big podcast that I, I was on. Shout out, Max Maxwell. Love you, bro. Yeah. Um, his podcast did a lot. And so, like, all of a sudden, you know, I go from a guy who had an owl as his profile picture on social media <laughs> to uh, Jamil, you know. And, and then COVID really was where things kind of – I had the time, right? Mm. So we were all locked up in our houses. I was taking walks around my neighborhood every day. 
and I was bored. So I just turned my iPhone on and I started talking. I started just sharing my opinions, not about COVID, but about the real estate market in relationship to COVID. And people were paying attention because it made sense and people were wondering. And also they wanted to know, are deals still happening? And so I was, because Keegley does such a high volume of transactions and you know we are nationwide, I was able to give insights to folks that were wondering how yeah. things were going. And oddly enough, it was helpful to people because we were, we were really sharing information that ultimately became this big run up mm. that we saw post COVID or during COVID, what happened to the real estate market. And so it's been, it's been an incredible journey, man. And I'm grateful for everything yeah. and I'm excited to see where it goes. I love that. So at what point, you know, obviously for those people that don't know, and probably everybody knows at this point, but you built uh, along with a couple of other partners, a company called Keegley. Yeah. And Keegley, uh, you know, from at least the way that I look at it is probably arguably the biggest wholesaling company uh, in the nation. Yeah. And, you know, you eventually took that and you franchised it and you had a bunch of franchise. I mean, you turned it into this huge thing, right? And then it started to branch off and then you had Astro flipping and um, what, like, walk me through that. I mean, at one point, like you say, you're just a guy, right? That, I mean, you had been in real estate for, uh, how long had you been in real estate prior to Keegley? So I had started in 2002. I began wholesaling on accident. I kind of bootstrapped the business model. I, I'll be honest, dude, I thought I invented wholesaling. Like, I, I had no idea because I didn't, I, w I was in Canada at the time, right? So I didn't have access to the Ron Legrands and I didn't know who Carlton Sheets was and like all these people they eluded me because I'm watching public television in Canada. So I didn't get to see the infomercials and I didn't know what was out there. And so when I got into real estate, it was truly on accident. It was me trying to piece together a transaction where I was trying to insert myself into a deal where I didn't belong because I didn't have money. And I put together a deal where I made 47 K literally by stumbling into a, into it, right? And so these serendipitous things, this was in 2002, these serendipitous things, they're interesting because look at, look at what's happened since then, right? I, I'm grateful, I'm grateful for all of it, but I started in 02, I began wholesaling then, and I built a business model where between 2002 to 2008, my sister and I, we were wholesaling single family, then we went to wholesaling apartment buildings, and we did really well. We made millions of dollars and then the market crash happened and it all imploded on us, mm -hmm. right? Funny enough, back then, we were doing something similar to what Pace is doing in Subject 2, but in Canada, they were assumable mortgages. And you know that all just went belly up. So it's funny, the reason why I'm so adverse to leverage these days is because I saw what can happen when a market tanks and you have to debt service. And so, it didn't end well for us in Canada. The, the market really imploded and our business imploded. And I ended up taking down my family, friends, myself. We all just went totally belly up. My parents became homeless. I was homeless. We ended up moving into a two bedroom apartment together. It was just a unfortunate thing. But at the same time, we all stuck together. Mm. So family and unity, was strengthened in those times of grief and strife. And so really the foundation, not that we didn't have a strong foundation, but the foundation of that unconditional love in our family was set, right? Because I messed up. Mm. And when you mess up that bad and you like essentially lose your entire family's nest egg and nobody blames you for it, nobody points their finger at you and says you suck, you ruined us. You're like, I never heard that from my mom and dad. Wow. I never heard that from my sister. Nobody, nobody ever blamed me, you know? And even though I was to blame, I will never forget that. I'll never forget the love. I'll never forget that kind of just support that I received from my family. And it taught me, it taught me how to move forward in life. It taught me how to be with my own family now as a married man, you know, how do you love unconditionally? How do you support someone unconditionally? How do you do that? How, do, how does that even work? And so, you know, we have this really warped idea of what love is in life, right? We think love is this, we all think we love people, but we really, I don't know that a lot of us really understand because it's always just an exchange of benefit, mm. right? You're like, you do this for me and I'll do this for you and this is love. And then as soon as that person stops doing that thing, now you're not, 
now you're mad and then you're like, well, you don't love me because you don't do that thing. And then, so I'm not going to do this thing. And so all of a sudden you're not doing the things that you're expecting of each other. And then relationships degrade. And then you're like, we fell out of love, but it was never really love. It was just, you guys were just doing stuff for each other. <laughs> Very true. You know, yeah. it's, it's interesting. And so like, I, I really got an understanding of what it means in a deeper level and how to give it. Yeah, true love, right? True, true, unconditional love, where it isn't a self-serving type of love. It's a, it's a, you know, selfless type of love, right? Yeah, um, I love that. So when that happens, then I would imagine on some level that is what drove you to them want to go say, okay, I gotta go, I gotta go build something, right? I gotta go do something, and 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 it wasn't right away. Obviously, you started Kegley, and that whole thing happened, but it was shortly thereafter. I'd imagine at some point you ended up in the U.S., right? Yeah. Yep. And then you started wholesaling on your own, or you started flipping, or what did that process look like? You're here, you are like, okay, I gotta make something happen. I'd imagine. Yeah. So I I actually left Canada and I went to L.A. to become a comedian first. So that was my first little stop. I was. Um, at the Upright Citizens Brigade, Second City, and I was just learning comedy. I was learning the, the science of comedy, and it's an ex extremely scientific process. In fact, you know, once I really s started to understand what goes into a joke, I couldn't listen to comedy anymore because I was like, wow, like this is so rehearsed, and it's all just so... Like everything matters, you yeah. know, from from timing to timing, especially, but like the words and the word order and the cadence and, you know, how many times you hit a joke. It's like mm. all it's all really deliberate. Uh -huh. And so I learned that. And, you know, I, I enjoyed my time as a comedian. I'm, you'll ne you're, once you're a comedian, you're never not a comedian. So I'm I still yeah. enjoy making people laugh in my videos and my ads and I get to collaborate with Kanode over here mm -hmm. and we do funny skits and just get to exercise that creative part of me that I just never want to lose. Yeah. But that stop in LA, I think gave me a lot of tools that I needed, but it's expensive to live in Los Angeles. And when you're not earning any money as a comedian, which is essentially what happens unless you're Kevin Hart, right? Like there's <laughs> I, like comedians are broke until they're Kevin Hart. Mm -hmm. There's no in-between. There's no in-between. Like, the guys in the middle, they're still poor. Yeah. And and it's not until, like, you pop that you actually get somewhere, right? So it's like that's one of the hardest professions ever because the middle ground is still, like, you're on a grind. You're still doing clubs, and they're not paying you well. You don't, you don't go on a tour of comedy clubs and come out rich. You pay bills. You know, you might be able to support your family, but you're not buying a Rolls Royce. Like, mm. none of that's happening, right? So it's it's an interesting world. But I'm over there in L.A. trying to make my rent, and I'm noticing what's happening in Phoenix, right? I'm, I'm looking at the real estate market because I can't stop, right? I'm, yeah. You know, when you're interested in something, you always look at it, right? Yeah. Um, I'm looking at the real estate market. I'm watching just the news and 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 i'm sensing the bottom i'm sensing the bottom of the 2008 calamity and then i'm looking at real estate prices and i'm thinking this is insane like these are houses that are twenty five thousand dollars that were once three hundred thousand dollars like how does this make any sense this is ten percent and then i'm looking at rental prices and i'm like wow you can buy a house for 30 grand and rent it for a thousand like that's like that's Ponzi that's a scheme heck of an returns, ROI, yeah. you know. Like yeah. so, so for me, my the wheel started turning, right? So I start putting properties under contract in Phoenix. You know, we, my sister and I, we we started to earn a little bit more money, and we had some other investments that were starting to kind of come together. She actually uh, had pulled our family out of our economic BS that I put us in by really busting her butt in Saskatchewan, okay. Canada. She, she, we had a couple of like run down buildings that we didn't lose because we had given them to our father before the, the, the meltdown happened. And these were in the worst, two worst neighborhoods in all of Canada, like the, like nationally, the worst neighborhood of Canada. And she went and revived them and turned them into sober living properties and sold them. And like, and really like she, she was the revival of our family. Wow. Right. So, we have that I can, that that money that's coming from the work that she's doing. I'm meanwhile the leech, right? I'm I'm in LA 
telling jokes, not earning anything. But because my sister had saved our asses, we had a little bit of cash. And so that cash needed to be deployed somewhere so that we could grow it and create income. So I'm looking over at Phoenix, Arizona now, and I'm like, oh, wow, look at this. Like, you can get these returns. So we start putting properties under contract that were short sales. Now, I don't know if you remember yeah. that time, but short sales are an interesting beast because you if you've ever wanted to get into wholesaling real estate and you want to learn how to flip contracts and wholesale, right? Maybe you're brand new, maybe you've never wholesaled a deal, or maybe you're even doing a couple of deals a month right now now but you want to learn how to do more instead of joining my coaching program or somebody else's coaching program we're actually looking to hire so go ahead and message me 480-418-5339 and send me a text message opportunity okay so if you want to work with me you want to work with my incredible team you want all of our leads you want all of our systems all of our processes everything right and I've done about 2,000 wholesale deals in my career, then go ahead, shoot me a text, 480-418-5339, and message me, opportunity, and look, especially if you're in my state, okay, the state of Arizona, if you live in Arizona and you wanna get into wholesaling, this especially is an opportunity for you because you can come sit right in this office with my entire team and be a part of one of the biggest wholesaling companies in the country. I look forward to talking to you. You can write an offer on a short sale and it won't get accepted sometimes for six months right. while the bank reviews offers and there's a whole process in a short sale. So that was all happening. So the way that it would work is you would write like 10 offers and then maybe two would get accepted. That was just the game at that yeah. time. So because you're writing all these offers and you don't know what's gonna come to fruit or not, you're writing more offers than you can actually buy. So there I am writing offers and all of a sudden two properties come approved that I can't close on because we just didn't have the funds at the time, right? We'd bought other mm -hmm. stuff. So I did what I knew how to do, which was sell a contract. <laughs> and I go on a Craigslist and I write a little ad and I just, share the information of what contracts we had for sale. And 15 minutes into writing that ad, my phone rings and Tim Wynn from True Freedom mm -hmm. Achievers, he calls me up and he goes and drives by and he says, I'll take them. Wow. And I make $18,000 in 15 minutes. And I'm thinking, wow, I'm over here telling jokes for free. Meanwhile, I can make $20,000 near by doing what I know how to do. And so it was a sign, you know, like I had to, I really had to take inventory of my values, what I was trying to accomplish in life at that point. Was I living for myself or was I living for my family? Mm -hmm. You know, what was important to me? And did I want to continue following this path where I'm self-serving and trying to be a comedian for me? Mm -hmm. Or do I do what I have a gift to do, which is real estate and find a way to revive our family? And so I chose the latter. Yep. I had to sacrifice my dream so that I could rebuild our, our household. So I remember it clearly. It was my birthday. It was December 12th, 2012, 12, 12, 12. Wow. I'm in a U-Haul leaving LA in tears because of course I feel sorry for myself because I'm, I'm burying my dreams to sacrifice for our family. But that's how I felt at the time. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, I'm, my, I'm never going to make it. I'm going to be here. I'm going to just, you know, flip houses and wham, wham, poor guy. Right. So what a, what a, what a blessing it yeah. was. Cause like you never, you never realize how life will knock at your door and how all the things that you desire will find their way to you when you make the decisions that aren't for you, for other people instead, you know? And so that's how it, that's how I feel. That's what happened, yeah. you know? And those decisions are tough to make, right? I mean, when you're in that moment, you know, obviously in retrospect, you're looking back and you're talking about it and it sounds like, oh, okay, you know, but for people watching or listening that are in maybe a moment right now where they there's a fork in the road, they can go right or they can go left and they have that gut feeling similar to you where it's like, okay, I feel like I should go that way, but that's the harder way, right? Like that typically, the way you should go is typically the way that does not feel comfortable. It's not really the way you want to go. Um, that's typically how it goes, right? In that moment, what did like? Was there anything that really helped you just say, okay, you know what? Enough is enough. Like I'm going that direction. Yeah, it was my family, man. Yeah. It was my sister. 
it was my now wife, but at the time she was my fiance, Natalie. It was wanting to do right by everybody. I wanted to build a family. I wanted to be able to take care of my little girls, you know, Nats, Taylor, and my charisma, you know, like I wanted to make sure that these girls were going to be okay. I wanted to make sure that I could do something for my mom and dad. I wanted to be able to elevate our lifestyle. I wanted to thank my sister for all the work that she had done to help us out of that situation. I, I wanted to be the son I knew I could be for all of us. And I had to show up for us. I had yeah. to do the work that was necessary to pull us out of the situation I put us in. And that's what it was. I love that. Yeah. With the moment you put it on other people, right? The moment it's not about you and you make it about other people is typically the moment that the floodgates open, right? Because that's what really life is all about, right? It's yeah. about other people. I love that. So then at, at, at what point did you meet up with Josiah and Hunter and this idea of Keegley? Uh, because you were you were successfully wholesaling, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. you were for for many years. You know, like when I had met you, you you know, you had your little thing going on, and, yeah. and you were doing a bunch of deals, right? I was, I was doing a bunch of deals. I was working with. Uh, at first, I started working with John May. Um, I don't say his name a lot, but you know, he's an interesting guy. Um, left that relationship. I started working a lot with Chris. It was funny because uh, my wife, she ended up getting sick, and there was a moment where she had a prescription that we had to buy. It was like 6,000 bucks and I didn't have the money for it. And it was, you know, I was working with John at the time and like, I wasn't making any money with John. He wouldn't let me make money. Right. He was like, he was really like, I'm going to make the money. You're going to make a couple grand kind of guy, you know? Yeah. And so uh, shout out John. Uh, anyways, um, Chris, on the other hand, I, I remember cold calling him on a Sunday and he answered. Wow. And I was like, hey, dude, I got access to some houses. I'm really talented at getting stuff under contract that makes sense. But I really need somebody that I can make real money with. I want I want to, like, work with someone. And, you know, Chris, he's a good yep. dude. He he was like, yeah, send me what you got. And lo and behold, I sent him the two houses I had under contract and he took them both. Yeah. And I literally was able to make the money that I needed to save my wife's life that wow. week because of a deal I did with Chris. And so there we go. I'm off to the races. I now have a distribution network through Sell Wholesale Houses, which was fantastic for me. And I'm now ramping up my lead gen, right? So I'm really talented at finding deals, talking to agents, creating relationships, getting properties sent to me. I'm doing it all. Boom, 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 boom. Things start to go. I start to get ambitious. My mind starts to think larger. And I have this idea that I want to build a nationwide wholesale company. And I take it to Chris. Mm -hmm. I take the idea to Chris. He'll tell you. He'll say, yeah, I, I passed on Keegley. Yeah. And he did. He passed on it. He was like, I'm not really into it. Like, I, I'm, I'm in my own life right now. I want to do the things I want to do. You know, I'm enjoying my yacht. I'm enjoying my life. You know, I'm, I'm really not really trying to build what you want to do, you know. And I respect him. I respect him for the decision I respect him for being true to who he wants to be and what he wanted, you know? And so, oddly enough, I'm at a a sandwich packing party at Torsten Colson's house. <laughs> and Shout out Torsten. Ta shout out yeah. Torsten. Torsten uh, <laughs> invites me over. You know, I, Torsten and I were having a conversation. We were talking about, you know, making money and how, how, how we were both worried about mm -hmm. our children being entitled and not understanding how important it is to know how hard it is to earn money. Yeah. And so he thought, why don't we do something? Why don't we have all of our families and friends come to my house? And he was living in Greyhawk at the time. And we'll, we'll, we'll pack like a thousand sandwiches for homeless people and bring your kids and we'll, we'll make them, yeah. you know, give out the sandwiches to homeless people the next day. And I was like, this sounds great. So he invites Josiah and Hunter to that party. I'm there with my wife and kid. And we're packing sandwiches, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And Josiah walks up to me and he's like, hey, you're that guy everybody's talking about, does all those deals, right? And I'm like, maybe. What, what do you mean? I didn't know people were talking about me really, yeah. right? But I, they were. And he said, yeah, didn't you do like 14 deals this month? And I'm like, yeah. Actually, no, I did a few more, I think. And he was just shocked because he just couldn't understand the volume, right? He's like, how are you doing it? I'm like, well, I focus on one thing and then I, I sell deals through uh, somebody else. Like, I'm just really intentional about doing what I do best and then I let other people do what they do best. And then he said, well, can you sell, can I sell some of your houses? And I was like, no. <laughs>
You can't. I'm already in a relationship yeah. with Chris. Like, I'm already working with Chris all the time, so it's not going to work out with us, right? I, you know, I didn't think, like... And yeah. so Josiah was just like, well, take my number anyways, you know, if you ever need me or if I could ever do anything for you, I'm, I'm happy to be helpful. You know how he is. Yeah, Josiah yeah. is just a gracious, wonderful guy. And so that was his, his like, the end of it for him and what, his, what he thought was happening. But lo and behold, a few weeks go by, and Chris disappeared to the Bahamas and didn't tell me. Mm. And so I was a little salty because I'm like, man, I, you know, he never says, he never tells me when yeah. he's going to leave. He just disappears, right? And here I am locking up houses and, and, and risking earnest money and doing all this stuff, and, like, he's on a yacht. Mm. So I called Josiah, and I'm like, bro, I got two houses for you. Go to work. Yeah. And no joke, half an hour later, he sells them both. Wow. And I'm thinking to myself, wow, this is talent. You know, these guys are fast. They're responsive. So then I f throw them a few more. And then I throw them a few more. And then I throw them a few more. And then all of a sudden, I'm just like, these guys are great. You know, they communicate. Yeah. They answer my phone calls. They're young. So they've got a lot of energy, more energy than I did at the time. <laughs> you know, like I, I really was like, this is, this is good. Like, I like what's happening here. So I talked to Josiah about it. I'm like, listen, uh, you guys are obviously young and you don't really have the financial backing right now well you know we've been doing really well my sister and i are willing to throw a million dollars up so that we have cash to close and and fund deals yep you bring your skills to the table and let's go half half on a company yeah and He's like, well, I need Hunter. I need to bring Hunter on. I'm like, well, you got half the company. Do what you want with your half. Yep. I said, I need my sister, so I'm going to do with mine what I want with my half. And he's like, done. And that's what we did. Wow. You know, we, he brought Hunter along, which was an incredible addition. I brought my sister along, which is an incredible addition. And the four of us just went off and built Keegley. And that was, you know, a fun journey in itself, too. It's still going, you know, yeah. like that. Every time I walk into that place, it's so much bigger than me now, right? Like I, like, I don't even know a lot of the names of the people that are in there. It's just become so big, right? Yeah. Like it's, you, you, really, you really understand how a company can become its own organism when it becomes its own mm -hmm. organism, right? Like it's got its own head. It's got its own body. It's got its own name. It's got its own personality. It's got its own thing. And, and it becomes way more than the parent. Yeah. Right. Like it now it's standing on its own two feet and it's out in the world having babies. Right. And so that's what happened, dude. How did you know at the time that Josiah and Hunter, aside from them being able to sell your deals, they were young, they had energy. Right. Like, was there anything else about them that you knew, like, hey, these are guys I could probably build something cool with? Well, they were s structured and systemized. You know, that was the thing I was missing because I'm like any other act guy you would ask. I'm all over the place. <laughs> right. Like and that's just what it is. Right. I'm a I'm a visionary type of person. I'm I'm a communicator. I'm a relationship builder, but I'm a terrible implementer. Mm. I'm really bad at building systems. I'm really like I don't care about computers. I don't want to sit down <laughs> and get into a CRM and and manage everything I did was on my telephone and my cell phone by text message. I was copy and pasting text messages and sending them off every and morning. And one of these, right? Yeah, bro. That's why <laughs> this is. A, yep. I'm I'm 43 years old. This is my jam, yeah. you know. Meanwhile, these two kids are over there in their computers building podios out and and creating ways to systemize and and scale. Mm. And I and I, you know, it was there was a moment where I had to really check my ego. Because I'm older than them. So I was substantially older than them than the two of them. Hunter wasn't even 18 years yeah, old when he, he joined young. us, right? So, like, he was 17. <clears throat> and I'm like, I'm about to back this company with a million bucks, right? Yeah. So you think about it. You're like, is this, is this smart? But it was. It was the smartest thing I could do because I, I understood what I was missing. Yeah. I was really self-aware, you know? And I think that's a key element that people miss sometimes is that they – they delude themselves into what they're bad at and what they're good at, right? They gas themselves up on the things that they're okay at, and they're completely unaware of the things that they suck at, yep. and then they move around in life living in lies. Mm. Meanwhile, I was very self-aware. I was very honest with myself. You know, I, I could say, hey, you're disorganized. You don't have a good follow-up process. You are really good at talking, and you drink too much, <laughs> right? So, like, here I am being very real with myself about mm -hmm. my limitations and what I have to offer. 
And then I was being really real about what their limitations are and what they had to offer. Mm -hmm. And other than age, they really didn't have limitations, you know, and that age limitation, that's just in my head. That wasn't real. You know, that wasn't a real problem because so what if they're young? You know, they were both brilliant human beings. Right. And so uh, it was a good bet. Yeah. That's awesome. I remember those days. I mean, I remember I was sitting, I mean, I, I went to Australia with Josiah and Hunter. I, I was, yeah, I, they were selling my deals yeah, while they were in Australia. I, I, was, I was calling them. Mm-hmm. And that was the other piece, right? When they were answering my calls and it was the middle of the night for them yep. over there. And I was doing what I was doing over here in the States and I'm sending them deals and I'm calling them. Uh, the fact that they would pick up my phone call every single time, no matter what time of night yep. it was and respond and, and get the deal out to me, dude, you can't. Yeah. There, there's, there is no replacing that, that type of yep. ambition, that type of commitment. Yeah, yeah. bro. Like that's, Insane. that's what it takes. That's, you know, that's when I knew like, oh man, these guys are, these guys are my, my speed. These guys yeah. are my kind of guys, you know? So I remember I sat there. I mean, I remember them waking up at ridiculous hours, going to bed at ridiculous hours. At that time, I don't know that I knew exactly whose deals they were selling, but I was sitting right there a foot and a half from them, and I I witnessed the whole thing. I still have pictures on my phone, you know, of of that time. And then I remember going back in Josiah's living room in Gilbert with the white carpet and the little step down, and they had the big square of desks, and Josiah had a a bacon uh, uh, skillet on the on the counter, and he's cooking bacon while he's clo- you know Doing while he's talking to people, yeah. right? Yeah. And uh, and that is really where I learned a lot of what I learned, right? That's where I I that was the first time I really saw like dudes that were really like my age or similar to my age that were just blowing it out of the park, right? right, right. That also not only that some of the best human beings I ever met in my entire life. Yeah. Right. Like that was, and that was for me, what I, I looked at when I saw Josiah and Hunter, I said, not only are they doing the right thing in business, right. And they're killing it in business, but they're incredible human beings. And I didn't see that prior to that. I saw a lot of people in business that were sharks. I saw a lot of manipulation. I saw a lot of other stuff where, you know, then I saw Josiah and I was like, well, hold on a minute. Like, how is this guy able to do it, do it all? He has a great relationship with his family. He has a great relationship with people. He, he has a great heart. He's got a good relationship with God, and he's building a really cool company, right? right? And I loved that about him. And then I loved when you joined, obviously. And and at that point, it was Atlas Investments. Correct me yeah, if I'm wrong. Yeah, he was he was Atlas. Okay. Yeah. And I was A to Z property <laughs> management. Yep, I remember. I didn't that. even property manage. What the hell? Yeah, I, I I wrote some offers for you back for A, a oh, to yeah, Z. Oh yeah, you wrote yeah. a lot. Yeah. You're still in my phone as Austin T Ninja. I love you. You were Austin the Ninja because like you would you were fast at writing offers, mm-hmm. and I I would let you. If you're a real estate agent or a real estate wholesaler, then you know that lead generation is one of the most important aspects to any business. You know that you have to consistently generate leads on a weekly, monthly, and yearly basis. That way your team has people to call and that way you're constantly getting new opportunities in your company. I actually partnered up with a company called Rocket Lead Services and they have VAs that are outbound cold calling on your behalf every single day. In my experience, there's a lot of different ways that you can generate leads as an agent or as a wholesaler. You can do pay-per-click, you can drive for dollars, you can do text messaging, you can do Facebook ads, Instagram ads, and so much more. In my experience, I believe that cold calling is by far the number one way to generate leads in 2022. Not only is it my favorite way, but it is the highest ROI from what I've ever found. So Rocket Lead Services is one of the best companies out there for doing just that. They have virtual assistants that get assigned to you and to you only that are constantly calling motivated sellers to generate leads for your business. Again, this is for anybody looking to generate seller leads for their business. This is for a solo real estate agent looking to do a couple of deals a month all the way to teams that have over 100 agents and you're looking to generate more leads for your team. Wholesalers that are looking to generate more seller leads, all the way to wholesalers that are looking to do many, many deals per month. Go to www.rocketleadservices.com and go ahead and book your free consultation. Again, that is www.rocketleadservices.com and book your free consultation. Now, let's get back to the show. I would send you the houses that yeah. I liked and then you would write them and you represent me yeah. and then we would go and wholesale them and you mm-hmm. either get a commission or we split the assignment yeah. fee. So there was, 
you were like one of my first agents that I was yeah. working with. So it was cool, man. That's awesome, man. Yeah, Torsten was my mentor at the time, and that's yeah. how I kind of got involved with everybody. So what were like when you initially partnered up? Which is obviously your goal was to scale, right? You took this idea to Chris. You're like, hey, I want it nationwide, right? But did you ever think that it would be as big as it got? Oh hell yeah! It really. Oh yeah, but bro, like I I. So there was a time I got this like, I don't know what you call it, premonition or vision or whatever, right? I knew it. I was like, this is what's gonna happen. I'm gonna be the number one wholesaler on the planet. Wow. And and it it was funny because that's when I started meditating. And I remember when I was meditating and I would like they were like, you know, your one of your questions like, what's your mantra? Mm -hmm. It's different now, but at that time it was I'm gonna be the number one wholesaler on planet Earth. And that's what I would say. I would meditate and I that would be my vision. That would be wow. the thing, right? And it's interesting to me how you can really draw a reality to yourself from intention and action because I did. Yeah. And what I saw is exactly what's happening right now. And it's not it's not surprising to me. It's not surprising to me because I do believe we are in a spiritual plane. Mm. I do believe that we live in parallel realities. And I think that you can walk into a better version of yourself at any moment, the moment that you decide to let go of you deciding you're separate from God. I love that. Yeah. And the meditation and stuff. I just got back from a Joe Dispenza retreat, uh, a week long. Joe, How is that, by the, the way? It, it was the advanced Joe Dispenza retreat, unlike anything I'd ever been to in my entire life. I've been to Tony Robbins. I've been to, you know, everything you could imagine. Uh, Les Brown, Bob Proctor, Gary V, Grant Cardone, you name it, right? Joe Dispenza was on another level. Even more... Tony and Joe are probably similar, but they're totally different, right? Where Joe, you know, a lot of it, it's all meditation pretty much. I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's the an, entire... Yeah, it's, it's, it's energy manipulation. It's a meditation retreat, right? Yeah. Um, but you learn, man, the advanced retreat, you Did would Did anybody love. have, like, enlightenment experiences oh, there? Insanity. Like, yeah. people got healed. Yeah. Um, like, people that were paralyzed from the neck down stood up out of their wheelchair and, and wow, walked. You know bro. what I mean? Like, just crazy stuff, right? Yeah, it's not crazy, though. Well, I, of course. But, I mean, if, you know, when you're yeah. out there in the world talking to people, yeah. you know, a lot of people would presume that to be crazy. I mean, it's 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 stuff you don't see every day, right? I mean, like out in the world and and uh i mean i had seen it like back when i like with todd white like i took um josiah and hunter run into a todd white uh conference and they did the baptism of fire right and you see people falling over and standing up and doing all kinds of crazy stuff and then but then you see it in this realm which is not it's not so much about god it's more the it's more source like energy like yeah i i you know i think i think the name has has created and brought with it a lot of baggage you know, you say God, you say, you say, and then all of a sudden people think religion or they think the thing that might have hurt them, mm. you know, because we've been a lot of a lot of problems have come through the name of God. A lot of separation has come through the name of God, Yeah. you know, and that sucks. A lot of a lot of superiority, a lot of inferiority, a lot of a lot of people, you know, claiming to be better than or, or more than others has come in the name of God. And I think that that pain is sad. That pain is wrong. That pain is evil, you know? And I think what the truth is, is that we all have the creator in us. And I think that a lot of, I think what power and I think what people have tried to do is, is, is dim that because people are scared to death of everyone shining. People are scared to death of everybody being their best self because they want to be better than others. Yeah. You know, there's a piece of, there's a there's an egoic piece in all of us that want to be superior, that wants to feel like you're the man or you're the woman or you're the one, you know, but it's like, no, man, we all are. Yep. We all can be. We all have that power in us. But in some of us, we agree to it and others we don't. Yeah, I love that outlook. Yeah, it's very true. Um, I want to I want to talk a little bit more about Keegley and then we'll shift gears. Um, you know, when you partnered up with them, you had this vision, so you knew what, what you were going to eventually build, but obviously if I'm a visionary, so I, I'm i sure you're, you're similar, you know the how, or you know the what, but you don't exactly know the how, right? Like you know the end destination, you don't know every little nitty gritty step of how you're going to get there, which is where the integrators come in, it's where the, the people, the implementers come in, right? Right. What did that look like? I mean, here you are, like, okay, you're, you're at this point, you're the deal guy, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going to get the deals, you guys are going to sell the deals, but we're going to be one company. So what right? they did is they had somebody follow me around. And they watched me for a few, like a week. And it was Kevin Oswald, actually. Okay. And so Kevin Oswald, he, um, he would, he literally shadowed me for an entire week and he watched my process. He watched what I did from morning till night. And he took notes because they needed to systemize me. And that's what they did. Wow. So they just took all the stuff I did all day long. They listened to all the conversations I had all day long. 
He literally took notes on everything. He tape recorded me. He watched me. He took he like he literally transcribed what I did all day long and then went and turned it into a process. And that's our act process now. Wow. It's even better than what I did because I was still like, you know, wasting time doing whatever in the middle of the day. Right. Like I, I, I wasn't as efficient as our staff is. Yeah. You know, so. That was an incredible thing to see happen. What I loved about what you did and what you, I mean, really, like when I had met you is is the simplicity of what you did, yet you did it so well. And I think that a lot of human beings, they, I don't know if they're just inefficient or if they're lazy or they just, they don't know what they don't know. I think a lot of people think they're working hard, but they're not working hard at the things that move the needle. Mm. Right? We spend a lot of, like, if you can sit down in the day, you're like, I'm working on my wholesale business. And then all of a sudden it's like, <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm hungry. Let's get lunch. And it's like, wow, okay, bro, you did jack shit. Mm. And that's the thing, right? Is that we're all gassing ourselves up, lying to ourselves about how much actual work we're doing. And this is something I say in the astro community all the time is like, you aren't working as hard as you think you're working. You're not doing nearly as much as you think you're doing. Until you start tracking your numbers, until you start actually counting the number of conversations that you're having every single day, until you start tracking your talk time, until you start tracking those metrics, you ain't got nothing. Right. And that's the piece. And I think as soon as people start getting it real with themselves about, oh, how much time did I spend today tinkering with my mm -hmm. pen and organizing my desk and you know changing the the way that my uh, uh, office looked and and then now thinking that I'm in my systems and working through my my podio like instead of doing all the garbage work do the work that moves the needle have the conversations that bring in the money yeah. let's figure out how to clean this all up later I want to I want to earn a check first and then we'll pay somebody to come clean it up you know so that's that was that's the difference is that I've always been very deliberate bro like i am i i i think that's a part of being a lazy man mm -hmm. right is that i only want to do the thing that's going to actually get the job done nothing else mm -hmm. because that's my nature my nature is i identify the thing that actually moves the needle and then everything else around it i ignore wow and i'm good at that it allows you to take action when other people are in inaction mode. They're studying, they're learning, they're reading, they're organizing their desk, whatever they're doing, like you're yeah. talking about, right? And you see that, and that's where I was going, is like in the beginning and, and really the act process now for you guys, I'd imagine there's some complexity to it now, but really it's talk to people. Yeah. I mean, so whether that's Facebook or LinkedIn or call agents or call wholesalers or call freaking Craigslist or drive to, call the bandit sign on the side of the road. It's just, it's how many relationships can I build in a day? Am I good at building relationships? Can I provide value? Can I, uh, you know, like that really in a nutshell is what it, what it is. 1000%. There's no secret guys. There's like, that's the thing too. It's like, there's everybody wants there to be this like magic button or this like you say these five words and you'll hypnotize the person on the phone and they will give you their house. No, man, like there's nothing like that out there. Nothing like that exists. You wanna know what it is? Be a human being. Find how to align with other people. Stop being combative. Figure out how you can help somebody and guess what ends up happening on the other side? Money. Yeah, and a lot of it. Yep. When you're not focused on it, when you focus on helping people, we just did a rebrand called One Roof. And all that was was taking all the different companies that we did, the retail, the wholesale, the flipping, the et cetera, on a smaller level than you. But we we do a lot of it. Um, we've done 210 deals uh, wholesale Incredible. this year so far. Incredible. Um, and, yeah, I mean, and, don't diminish your your guys' success. So bro. like you, you've really popped off, dude. Like to, it's fantastic to see. All we did was made it about the, the human being on the other end. That's, that's all it. that's all we did, right? We I just I preach in every meeting, hey, we're here to serve, we're here to help, we're here to give, we're here to love. If you call that person and care, stop reading from a script. Read from a script if you can sound like you're not reading from a script, but otherwise throw the script in the trash can and call them and comment on the dog you hear barking in the background yeah. or the TV or the Cardinals game or the whatever and build a relationship with the human being. Figure out what they need, what they want, where they're trying to go, what they're trying to accomplish, what they're trying to do, and then solve their problem. Yep. And you'll make a ton of freaking money. That's and I right. preach it every day, right? Yep. And it's what you and I really learned it from you. And I learned it from Josiah and I learned it from Hunter, right? I saw it day in and, and day out. And I learned out. it from someone else yeah. too, right? Like I, n none of us invent anything. Mm -hmm. That's the other piece, right? Like we're all, we're all regurgitating and learning from other folks. And so 
I mean, you know, the bottom line is is that when you become focused in that direction, things change. Yeah. And I, you know, it's interesting because my relationship with Pace is a lot like that, right? Because, um, you know, to bring him into the conversation, the the time when Pace and I started to collaborate together was an interesting time because he had also um, had gone through a situation with an individual whose name I said earlier, but I won't say again. And um, that person had ripped him off for a million dollars. And, and it was a terrible time for Pace. And he was trying to grow or actually just get himself out of that really bad spot. And I'm there side by side with him trying to help him we're doing wholesale deals together and then all of a sudden i'm i i'm like he's helping me a lot like he's sending me a lot of people and then all and then all of a sudden i started re seeing that people that were doing deals with me were starting to do deals with pace mm -hmm. and i was like oh damn i lost that deal but then you know i'm like but he's giving me so much value too and i'm watching that and then there was a moment there was a, i remember i called my wife actually i was driving down scottsdale road and I call my wife and I'm like, I'm like at a precipice right now where I have a decision to make. Is this relationship with this guy more important to me than losing a deal here or there? And 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 I honestly, I love him so much. I think he's such a cool dude and he's such a good friend to me. And he's done, he's brought me so much value and he's given me so many relationships that have done so much for me. I'm gonna stop even paying attention to anything I'm losing, and all I'm gonna do is love on him. Yeah. And the two of us, I mean, honestly, dude, that that has been a, a thing in itself, too. You know, yeah. Keegley has been incredible. But I think that what Pace and I have have really done in the world as two competitors, because we, we're not on the same companies, right? Yeah. Everyone thinks that Pace and I are partners. It's, it's hilarious, but we're not. We compete. Right. We compete for students. We compete for deals. We compete for everything, right? Eyeballs, attention, the whole thing. Um, but we do it in a way that it's collaborative, Yeah. right? And I love watching my brother win. I love it. And he loves watching me win. And it's funny, man. Like, we, we'll go and I'll, I'll make a key relationship and I'll run it back to the, to the team. And he'll go make a key relationship and run it back to the team. Like, just recently, the other day, I'm, he, he threads me in on a text thread with DJ Envy and Caesar, And he's getting us on the breakfast club. Wow. You know, and that's like Pace could have just gone and done that on his own. You know, yeah. but does he? No, I'm his competition. What does he do? He loops me in on a conversation and we do it together. Yeah. And I mean, that's the thing, bro. Like that kind of love, that kind of camaraderie and that type of heart that you see in folks, you know, just to be able to live like that and to do things like that. That's special, man. Yeah. And I'm I'm really grateful. And I hope everybody watching this, like, go out there and find that person out there, that 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 human being that you resonate with at such a deep level, whether or not you guys are competitors or whether or not you are on the same team, whatever that is, find that person, find those people that really mean something to you and then and then love on them without paying attention to the results, because mm. that is really a key thing collaboration over competition over you know all the day and it's just bro. the abundance mentality too it's, yeah. it's you know the moment you have an abundance mentality remember how you do anything is how you do everything as you know right yeah and a lot of people live in scarcity right and, and it, like it's hard not to yeah it's hard not to sometimes because you're like man if i go do this and this person's going to get ahead and then if this person gets ahead and then i'm not going to get there and then if i don't get there this is going to happen to me and we hallucinate yeah. all these terrible outcomes for ourselves just because we helped somebody mm -hmm. do you think we live in that effed up of a world that doing something nice for somebody is gonna make you homeless crazy it's it weird though yeah. but we'll actually put ourselves down that path of thinking yeah and then what do we get out of that nothing mm. i think paul selig who's a, a a very interesting author that i love reading and he says the action of fear is to claim more fear and so anytime that you're working in and moving in fear, scarcity, lack, separation, the result is fear, scarcity, lack, and deeper separation. Wow. That's it. Yeah. The, you, do ne you never get another result from that action. And so, like, you've got to look at your intentions all the time. You've got to look at your intentions all the time and yeah. decide 
wake up and make a decision to set an intention to not live in fear today. Set an intention to live in abundance today and then just move. When you set an intention and then just move, believe me, you will remember that you sent that intention. The things that will come and find you will give you opportunities to give, to be abundant, to live in that world, to remind you to keep the promise of the intention you made the moment you wake up. It's super important, the thing that you think of first thing in the morning, bro. I'm telling you, man. I used to wake up in the morning, and first thing I would do was pick up my phone. Mm. And then I would look at all the text messages that I had missed. And then I would look at all my emails. And then I would go to my social media, and I'd look at all the people who liked my posts. And then I'd go into all my DMs. And then at the end of that, like 30 minutes later, bro, I'm, I have anxiety. Because mm. I'm like, I'm behind already, and I'm still laying in bed. And then it's like, do I even have time to meditate? Wow, that's powerful. What did you do? Is it was it as simple as just waking up, training yourself to wake up, not grab the phone, meditate? Give me the morning routine of of Jamil Damji. So I will wake up, and the, before I grab the phone, the first thing I do is I I give thanks, and then the second thing I do in my mind is I set an intention for the day, and then the third thing that I do is I decide what type of day or what I am going to try to accomplish today, and then wow. I just sit and breathe. I just sit and breathe. I follow my breath. I let that, I imagine the oxygen coming into my body and replenishing my cells. I shake off cobwebs. I like, I put attention on tension. You know, wherever I've got tension in my body, if I slept weird or whatever, I just put my attention on that and I I let that kind of loosen up and I just get myself physically a little bit more nimble and I pop up out of bed. Wow. And then I go and do the things. Then I grab my phone and I get back into my world and then like I let the avalanche of whatever's coming to me come. But just that first moment of no. I'm going to take this very holy moment and I'm going to share it with my soul with God and I'm going to I'm going to make a I'm going to make my collaboration pl- plans with with myself and the lord this moment like right now and then i'm gonna go off and let the world understand who who the hell i am i love that i think it's one of the most powerful things you look at successful people and there's typically one thing two things that you can find in common with every so i've really never met anybody a high achiever that wasn't a morning person and that didn't to some degree and that didn't have a morning routine yeah you know i mean you just don't see it i mean you don't see people that just wake up at noon grab their phone right out of the gate and they're and they go make a hundred million dollars i mean some rappers do but like that like you know right but that's about it what are your goals yeah right yeah if you want to be a rapper then come to your i guess yeah it's cool like you know like i some of that stuff but it's not for me right you know i i wouldn't be happy like that i get so stir crazy like i can't be in bed longer than six hours yeah you know what? What would you say to somebody to bring it back to wholesaling really quick? Because I know a lot of people, and, and you get this all day long. But my viewers, maybe you know, they're seeing you for the first time. Somebody who wants to get into real estate, they want to get into wholesaling. Maybe they're working another job. Maybe they're not. Who knows what their situation is? But they want to. They need to make five, ten grand. Like they need to do a deal. Like where do they start? What do they do? So this is this is great stuff. I, I love the question. There's a number of ways to pick low hanging fruit. So first and foremost. Um, it's, it's really important that they get a foundational understanding of just learning the numbers, right? I, um, I do a weekly thing on my YouTube called Straight Outta Compton where I teach people how to comp houses. First, spend a week, learn how to understand value. Learn and to spot where potential is because as wholesalers, all we do is we sell potential, all right? That's it. We're not stealing equity. We're selling potential. Think of that. A lot of folks have this like ethical thing where they're like, oh, I don't want to go and buy a house from grandma and and not give her all the house is worth. That's not true. Mm. We're not we're not ripping off grandma. We're taking a slice of rehabbers profits. That's what's up. We're paying grandma exactly what her house is worth in its current state and condition. Then the other guy who's going to go and make a risk, a financial risk in that property and force appreciation. I'm taking from his pocket just a little bit. Right. So you have to go understand what that potential gap is. How can a person spend money and take a house from being worth this to this and learn what that means? Learn the different things that can happen. Maybe it's maybe it's increasing rent. Maybe it's doing a renovation. Maybe it's knocking it down and building a new house. Maybe it's uh, knocking it down and doing a rezone and doing entitlements, whatever it is, that's going to create that potential gap. Understand the play and then go sell the play for a piece. Right. Wow. Yep. So with that 
understanding in mind now, how do you find deals? Okay, there's a lot of places to find deals. Bro, how many deals have we done off the MLS? Do we do, we probably still to this day do 10 or 15 a month off the MLS. Likewise, right? right. So the MLS is a free place mm -hmm. to look, right? Go look at stuff that's on market 30, 60, 90 days and call those agents mm -hmm. and and find out how motivated those sellers are. And build relations and, and ask the agent if they've got another yeah. deal coming to market or right. another deal, a pocket listing. That's I mean, just, just it. build relationships. Right? Yeah. So you start off with what's available, and then after that phone call, and before that phone call ends, find out what's coming after that, right? Mm -hmm. so, so start there. The next thing you can do is start communicating it and, and creating relationships with wholesalers. Guess what? If somebody is on the phones talking to homeowners, getting deals under contract, they will have deals under contract to sell. Call them up. See what they've got available. Comp the deal. See if it makes sense. If it makes sense, bring it to me. I'll buy it. <laughs> I'll right? buy it. Yeah. That he'll buy it. That's mm -hmm. what I'm saying. Like there's to connect the dots. Yeah. It's so easy. So step number one, we'll start to learn the numbers. Start yeah. to understand the numbers. Learn how to maybe underwrite a deal. I mean, really look at the numbers. Right. Step number two, start figuring out where you can find a deal. Step number three, get that deal, underwrite it, sell the deal. Correct. Simple as that. It's very easy, dude. I love that. It's very easy. I think a lot of folks complicate this and i think that a lot of educators in the past overcomplicated it so that they could sell courses right that's just what it is like you know i looked at the old guard nothing against anybody right i have i have I, I respect everybody in the space i think you know everybody had their moment and i have my moment now and it'll be over at some point someone's gonna knock us off and they're gonna do a better job than pace and i and good for them i'm happy right I'm, 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 whoever you are, peace, no problems. You know, the thing is, is that right now, what I believe that people need more than anything is less information, more do, mm. right? Yep. So get into a community that's going to help you do it. Community, bro, like your, your tribe, your vibe, your people, the folks, your safety net, the, when you're down, when you can pick up the phone and get, and get a hold of a hundred people, a thousand people. I've got 5,000 astro flippers, bro. You got a problem? Someone's got your back. You're in a town. You're alone. You need to, you're hungry. You need to buy lunch. You want to go hang out with somebody? You can, you can just go into the Facebook group and someone will get you. Yeah. You want to do a deal right now? You, you need to, look, I've got folks right now. They're like, they come into the community. They're like, bro, I just need to, I just need to get a deal done right now. 40 people will come out and say, I got you. I got deals available right now. Yeah. So think of that. If you've got access to ready to sell inventory, then what does that person have to do? All they get now got to do is go and find a buyer. Where do you find a buyer? Tax records, MLS. There's so many places to find buyers. Craigslist. So connecting the dots is simple, dude. Yeah. But get into, an, get into a community where there's lots of dots. I love that. What if you're doing three or four deals and you can't seem to break through that barrier? Somebody's watching. They're doing a couple deals a month. They've kind of got that yeah, figured out. Yeah, because they're alone. The only reason that you're doing a, lo a small volume of deals is because you're alone. Look, bro, look at your office. Mm -hmm. What do you see out there? People. People. Right? Yeah. People. Why do you got a volume where you did over 200 deals in a year? People. Mm -hmm. People. Yep. You don't do more than one or two deals a month alone. Truth. What's your first hire? If you're if you're somebody doing a couple deals a month and they're looking to hire that first person, so far it's been just them. Their their act, their dispositions, their everything, right? Who do you hire first? Well, I get that question a lot, and I would say, still, I wouldn't go and hire you yet. I would I would look at the things that you don't like doing right off the hop. Hire that out, right? For me, transaction coordinating was bogging me down. It wasn't. I didn't want to go and hire another Jamil. I wanted to go and figure out how do I get this garbage off my plate. So I can go do more Jamil, yeah. right? And then finally, when I get to a point where I'm at a tipping point, then I clone myself. Then I hire a guy that, that's like me. But I don't do that off the hop, right? right? Because that's going to take my eye off the prize. That's going to take me off of developing my skills. I, wanna, I just want to get my garbage work out. It's like, bro, when you make a bunch of money, what's the first person you hire in your house? How's a maid, a cleaner. Why? Because I don't want to do that's that. that's the stuff you don't want. So why does it have to be any different in a business? Yeah. Yep. Like, why do you think you not think we it's the same thing you do at home, bro? Yeah. Like you hire a maid, you get somebody to come and clean your drawers. Yep. Right. You don't get you don't come in and get somebody to come and be your equal in your home and say, well, the, I'm I've I've made money in my house now. So I'm going to go hire somebody to come in and, and, and have intelligent conversations with me and, right. and check me. No, <laughs> you go and you hire somebody to come and wash your dishes mm -hmm. so that you don't got to wash the dishes anymore. So you can go do more of you. Very true. Do the same thing in your business. It's extremely true.
What are a couple of the things that you guys struggled with when building Keegly? A couple of the things that might have been hiring, it might have been people, it could have been systems. I think in the beginning, harder, it was hard for us to let people go because we were hiring a lot of family and friends and a lot of people from like, you know, places of worship and just like, it was just a lot of really like minded, beautiful human beings. And they don't all the time make the best hires, right? Yeah. And so I think we had a lot of people that were a part of our company that necess didn't necessarily need to be there as long as they were there. And so we spent a few hundred thousand dollars on keeping people around that probably should have been let go months earlier. Yeah. I that was that would be my, my most honest opinion about where we kind of could have done it better. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. What what uh when you're building this company, like at what point did you say, "Hey, I'm going to do the franchise thing." I mean, that was a that thing wasn't me. That had never been done before. So then, walk me through who that yeah. was. Yeah. In the wholesaling world, to be clear, like you know, there, there's always kind of been this way that wholesalers build a wholesale company, right? Like in my opinion, at least from what I always saw. And then it was like you guys came along, like you and Keegley came along, right? And you just basically took the whole industry, flipped it upside down and said, well, this is how we're going to do it. Yeah. Right. And franchises was one of those things. Yeah. Franchising was J Josiah, bro. So like my dream was to do corporately do deals in every state. Like so I was like the way that I would have done it would have been like have a Keekly corporate office in every state and blah, blah. And we tried it. We tried to go into Vegas and we got our asses handed to us. It was not easy. Right. Yeah. And we lost money and it was tough. And so we were like, oh, damn, that was tough. Like you touched the burner. You hand got burnt you're like don't do that again and so like of course growing and scaling was definitely something we wanted to do but like bloating and growing the corporate store was really dangerous and was and could be quite expensive and just problematic and hard to manage right and so as we were coming across a precipice of like do we go and get venture capital money do we you know do an offer pad open door type of thing where we get silicon valley money and 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 grow and scale that way do we uh, try to go public? Um, do we try and you know go into other markets as a corporate store? Well, Josiah had this incredible idea to franchise. Yeah, he came to us and said, you know, the best way that we could really 10x our valuation would be to have more of us without having to add bloat. Mm -hmm. And now we could take our model, we could we could train people on how to do our model in other places because it's proved it's proven and mm -hmm. it works. And we can help people grow their own Keegleys in different markets. And it was brilliant. But then you look at what it takes to become a franchise. And it's like, oh my, the reason why there's no fran not a lot of franchises out there is because it's a brain, it's brain damage, bro. Yeah. Like writing the FDD. Yeah, I bet. Insane, right? It was an insane process. And I gotta give it up and shake and and give a a tremendous amount of gratitude to Hunter because Hunter, he completed it. Wow. Hunter, Hunter did the FDD, right? Yeah. And so you had Josiah with the idea, you had Hunter with the implementation and the and the wherewithal to get it done. And then there we go. That's you insane. Know? Yeah. And so like it, my, again, the, both of those partners, right? They're they were God sent because that idea to do that was phenomenal. And it it wasn't mine. Yeah. Keegley's original idea, me. Where it went to, them. I love that. Now that you've been in business for so long with them, I feel like when people are in business and they make a lot of money, right? And, and all of a sudden your business grows. I mean, egos can get big, right? People's yeah. prides can get big. Things can happen, right? Where all of a sudden there's tension between partners, there's tension in relationships. Like there's not as much love anymore. There's not as much whatever. Is there anything that you guys have done as partners to keep? I feel like the love between you is the same as day one. Like, is there anything yeah. you've done? Well, the thing is, is that we were never really friends. Right. You got like, let's be straight. Josiah and Hunter and I, we never hung out. You never seen us out at a party together, like hanging out. Yeah. We, we're not the same people. Right. We're different kind of guys. And that's cool. Right. So like we didn't have that whole thing. And like if there's anybody that's got an ego in the company, it's me. Right. Josiah and Hunter are not that guy. They're not that they're, they've never been like, oh, I want attention or, oh, I want to be the face or, oh, la, la, la. Like n neither of them ever competed for that. Right. It wasn't a thing. When Josiah came out with Astro Flipping, it was uncomfortable for him. He didn't like that. He didn't like the the eyeballs on him with the ads and all that. He hated that stuff. Right. Yeah. And I was supporting him in the background, but I was also watching him suffer and like he didn't enjoy it one bit. Meanwhile, I'm over there growing a brand and he's like, oh, I see what's happening. This should be you, mm -hmm. you know. And so that was just 
a natural process. But I think the thing that we do really well is that we own who we are. We own who we are. And we don't try to be the other person, right? You see, Pace and I would never have been able to manage growing a Kegley together. Yeah. Because we would have stepped on each other's toes, right? But but Pace and I, we're like two planets that can that can go off into the orbit and just like live in this incredible world as two separate planets doing our thing and then you know gravity pulls us together and we do stuff together and then we also do our own thing and then we come together and we do our you know it's like it's beautiful um but like i never have that situation with josiah and hunter they're not they're not trying to do that everybody's got their own their own way their own life you know yep. hunter's trying to do his thing he wants to do his thing josiah wants to do his thing you know my sister wants to do her thing i'm doing my own thing and we all come together and we make decisions together, but it's never about like who's right. Mm. It's never about who's right. And I think that's a big part about it too, right? Is none of us are trying to hop on a partner's call and be the person on the phone that saved the day. Wow. Right? We're all on the phone being like, hey, how can each of us add something to the company today or this week that could be beneficial to the, the organization? Sure. So there's that, and there, I, and I really want to stress the part again, the fact that a lot of people go into business with their buddies, Yep. right? I've seen you in business with your buddy, mm -hmm. and, and like you probably can attest to it. It's not easy. No. It's not easy to be in business with someone like you, Yep. right? Very true. Because like you're doing the same thing, and then, you, and then oftentimes when people are like you, they're annoying because yeah. it's annoying to be like you. Right. It's like I'm annoyed by people like me. I, it's like you ever find that like yeah. you, when you when you like this, something you dislike about somebody is like you. Yep. The thing you dislike about them is is because they're like you. Isn't that strange? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. So so you want to know you want to know how to have a good partnership. Don't go into don't don't become a partner with yourself. Don't right. go become partners with your best friend. That's dumb. Go find somebody on the opposite end of the spectrum of who you are that has skills and qualities that are nothing like yours, and then go build a partnership with that person. I love that. Yeah, it's incredible, incredible advice. I think that um, you said it perfectly. You know, uh, when you were building like Astro Flipping, like whose idea was that, and what did that look like initially? I know that uh, Nick's a part of your guys' team. Yeah. Okay, so I remember like that when Nick used to work for Sam Ovens and yep. and the whole thing. So what did that look like? Well, it began with Josiah. Josiah obviously had the pedigree from Cody coming from the clever world. He understood the info space better than anybody. So he knew that what we had at Keegley was special, replicatable, and sellable. And so he, was, he took that information and, and packaged it and created an incredible, incredible information product, right? I think he didn't necessarily enjoy being the brand visionary being of that. Being the guy. Being the guy yeah. doing that. At the same time, the a lot of the business that he had packaged up was my were my ideas, anyways, right? Um, like, think about it, right? Like, I I brought a lot of that to the table in the first part, not all of it, but at least half of it, right? The the acquisition sides of it, and so I think that there was a lot of um, when Josiah really looked at it and and he and he thought about it clearly. I think he saw it didn't make sense with him at the head of it. And he gave me one of the greatest gifts a person could ever give somebody, right? Um, imagine that, right? You're building something, it's profitable, it's doing well, and then giving it away to somebody. Wow. And he did. Like, it was one of the most incredible calls I ever got. He called me up one day and he was like, hey man, I just wanted to talk to you about something. And I was like, cool. Because I was helping him on the sales side. I was actually like on the phones talking to people, signing them up for astro flipping. Like that's, I, there's probably students right now who talk to me that were like, that's the dude who signed yeah. me up. Before you were a before part, I was before the you were a partner. Dude, I was, guy, yeah. yeah, before I was the head of it, you know? Yeah. And Josiah gave me a phone call and he was like, hey bro, um, you know, I've been thinking about it a lot and I think it's the right thing to do and I prayed on it and I asked God and I feel really good about this. I, I'm, I want you to take over astro flipping. Yeah. And I was like, whoa, really? He's like, yeah. You've got it. You, you know, he's like, you know, all this stuff. It's your company. You did this. You know, you understand it better than anybody else could. I really enjoy building companies. I really enjoy growing companies. I don't enjoy being the guy. I don't enjoy being in front of a camera. It's not my vibe. It's not my shtick, you know. And I think you'd do a great job with it. And I think you'd take it and run with it. And you'd make it something that I can't. Yeah. And 
that was a real thing he did, dude. Like, it's like, who can do that? Who can sit there and, and take the, you know, making a lot of money and then just say, I'm going to give it away to somebody. Sure. And he did. Yep. Right. And, you know, I love Josiah, bro. Like, like again, being astro flipping gave me purpose. Because prior to that, I was making great money with Keegley, but I wasn't really helping anybody. I wasn't really doing anything to help people's lives. I wasn't, I wasn't adding to people's livelihoods. I sure. wasn't helping change people's family wealth trajectory. Like I, I wasn't changing destinies, you know? And when I got in that position, that's what I ended up being able to do. Sure. And it's been the greatest gift I've ever had in my life. I, I have a life purpose now. Because the the students that are a part of Astro, the people that I get to help build community with, the results that people are getting, the money they're making, the lives that are being changed from that place, dude, like just to be able to have had that chance and yeah. for Josiah to give me that gift, I can never I can never repay him. That's awesome. Yeah, very, very cool. That ultimately all led at some point I'd imagine the A and E thing came into the picture. Like, talk to me about the T V show, because that was a big deal. I mean, you yeah. The, uh, one day I'm like, oh wow, like they're they're on they're on TV, like they're doing it now. So that actually, funny enough, came from Pace. Okay. So Pace and I were fighting over a deal, and <laughs> he was, we were both chasing the same deal. It was part of that thing, like I was saying to you, like all of a sudden people that were doing deals with me were sending deals to Pace, and there was like it was strange, right? Like it was, but I mem remember I made the decision not to focus on like lack. I focused on our friendship and loving yeah. each other, right? And so. He's he would always come to me for buy numbers. So Pace would like send me an address and say, what's the most I can pay for this? And you guys still be able to sell it. And so he's sending me this address and he's like, dude, some knucklehead is keeps bidding me up on this house. And I don't can I pay more than this? And I'm like, I'm the knucklehead I'm bidding on. I'm talking to Ryan LaRue right now. Like the hell, you know, like, yeah. meanwhile, Ryan's sending the deal to both of us, like bidding us up against each other. If you've ever wanted to get into wholesaling real estate and you want to learn how to flip contracts and wholesale, right? Maybe you're brand new, maybe you've never wholesaled a deal, or maybe you're even doing a couple of deals a month right now, but you wanna learn how to do more, instead of joining my coaching program or somebody else's coaching program, we're actually looking to hire. So go ahead and message me 480-418-5339 and send me a text message opportunity, okay? So if you wanna work with me, you wanna work with my incredible team, you want all of our leads, you want all of our systems, all of our processes, everything, right? And I've done about 2,000 wholesale deals in my career, then go ahead, shoot me a text, 480-418-5339 and message me opportunity and look, especially if you're in my state, okay, the state of Arizona. If you live in Arizona and you wanna get into wholesaling, this especially is an opportunity for you because you can come sit right in this office with my entire team and be a part of one of the biggest wholesaling companies in the country. I look forward to talking to you. And so Pace is like, oh man, I'm like, listen, I'm just gonna bow out, you take it. And he said, no, let's do it together, let's just, do it together and we'll make some YouTube content. So I'm like, okay, cool. So we decide, I, I bow out of the deal, Pace takes it down and he's like, hey, meet me at the property and we'll shoot a YouTube video. And so Bobby shows up and I, uh, I, I'm there, Pace is there and he posted on his social media that we're gonna be shooting a YouTube video and like 40 or 50 people just like randomly show up. Because, you know, Pace has always been yeah. popping on his socials, right? Like, he, he, he makes an IG post and, yep. uh, you know, a whole bunch of people come out. So, he did that. And um, we make this video. And Pace and I are just being ourselves, right? We're laughing. It ended up being a Maricopa County Sheriff's Officer's house. Okay. And uh, he was also a hoarder. Shout out. Maricopa County Sheriff's Office and, <laughs> and shout out hoarders, um, which is also an A&E. Yep. Uh, so it's 60 days in. Uh, funny, it's so uh, weird how that's yeah. like, like I just put that synchronicity together in my head right now. But um, so I'm like laughing. I'm like, wow. It's like you think that you would go to a police officer's house and, 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 and it would be like in order. And it's not, right? It's like, wow. It's like, like this, is, it's, this is an actual pig, right? So... 
And I, yeah. sorry, I didn't mean it like that, but it was like this was terrible, right? Yeah. So like this person lived like like terrible. So I I'm like putting on his jacket and I'm like I'm just being a goof in this in this video, laughing, making jokes. Bobby's laughing, Pace is laughing, and the people that are walking through the house with us are cracking up. And Bobby puts this thing together. It's incredible. Pace posted on his YouTube and a casting director who had been tasked with going and putting together and finding new talent for A&E's new home block, Homemade Nation, she found it and started reaching out to me. And I'm ignoring her because I didn't think it was real. Yeah. And then she starts reaching out to Pace. And for the first while, he's ignoring her. And then, you know, because he had been reached out to a bunch of times in the past by casting directors, and it was always just a waste of time, right? So anyways, he responds and says... Look, we don't got time for this. Like, we're both really busy. And she's like, no, no, no. Like, I'm legit. He's like, yeah, everybody says that. She's like, no, I'm really legit. Like, I look at my e my email. I'm at A&E Networks.com, right? And so he reaches out to me and he says, you want to just come and have a half an hour Zoom call with these people? And I'm like, bro, this is such BS. Like, there's it's a production company at best. And they're not going to have any power with a network. He's like, well, I'll just come anyway. So I'm like, cool, I'll come up. So I go over to his house, and we're standing there on a Zoom, and I Google the lady that's on the Zoom call with us, and I look down, and I'm like, oh, shit, she's the vice president. <laughs> and then so I'm like, now all of a sudden, I'm like, oh, hello, and I'm like just being, I'm like on now, right? Because yeah. I'm not like trying to push this meeting off anymore, I realize I'm with somebody who can actually call a shot, you know? Yep. And we just did what we do, you know? We, we were funny, we were fun, yep. and I think they, they had a really good sense of what we could bring to the table just in terms of entertaining-wise. Mm -hmm. And so we really skipped all the steps. You know, normally how that goes is they interview you, then they come out and they shoot a teaser, and then a teaser, once it's looked at, can get ordered into a pilot. And then a pilot is then shopped to networks. And then somebody buys it. Or yeah. most, most, most ideas die at the teaser. Very few become pilots, right? So we were expecting the whole thing. Like they were going to come send some people. And they even said to us, we're going to send somebody out and shoot a teaser. And then that might turn into a pilot. And then that might turn into a... And we're talking to like 10 other people. So we were like, oh man, like as soon as that thing was over, we were like, it's not gonna happen. Yeah. It's like, there's, there's so many things, there's so many things stacked against us here. There's, there's all these other people that they're talking to, like God knows what this could be. And then it wasn't like four or five days later, we get a text message that says, hey, would you guys hop on a Zoom with us? Real quick, we just need you for a minute. And we hop on a Zoom and the VP was like, well, guys, this is really unusual, and I've never actually made a call like this before, but we're not going to shoot a teaser. We're not going to shoot a pilot. The network loves you. We're going to go right to a season order. You have a TV show. Congratulations. Wow. And we're like, damn. Yeah. <laughs> that happened. Yep. You know? And it was insane, dude. You know, we, you know, it was a tornado then. A few weeks later, there were producers coming to town, interviewing us, talking to us, meeting our family, doing background checks, all the things, right? Just, it just our lives be like got flipped upside down. It was, it was out of this world. How's the experience been so far? I mean, like, have you? Has, has it been a phenomenal experience? Yeah, it's been great. I get to hang out with my best friend and my sister and Pace's wife, and my my wife is on the show now. It's great, you know, like we. We really do some beautiful projects. We we spend a lot of of our heart and soul in these in these houses, and and we love it. We love yeah. our crew. I've I've become very close with our our executive producer and the VP at A and E, Brad Hulkman. Shout out, um, incredible dude. And so like we just gained lifelong yeah. friends. You know, like it's it's an insane twist of events yeah you know and i'm grateful for it i had always wanted to be an entertainer and it's 
just interesting how that came full circle for me. And I am enjoying the ride. I am enjoying the doors that it's opening for Pace and I. I'm enjoying being able to stand on top of the world and the, on top of the mountain with my, my brother and bestie. I'm enjoying all the benefits that Keegley's getting in return. I'm enjoying the benefits that Astro Flipping is getting because of the community and the eyeballs. I'm enjoying watch Pace crush it at sub two and the community he's building. I mean, bro, I'm 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 learning from Pace so much, you know, like he he really had the the wherewithal to make sub two into a world class community and, and taught me how to do the same with Astro, you yeah. know? And so that's what we've been doing. I've been I've been learning from the people around me. I'm 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 doing it the right way. I'm doing it with all of my best friends and family members, and I couldn't be happier, bro. That's awesome. Yeah, That's incredible. What's been the hardest thing of having that TV show? And the time commitment. Mm -hmm. It's just a lot of work, you know. It's so, and I can't let I I'm I'm a consistent person, so I can't let the other things in my life go because of it. Mm -hmm. So, with shooting a television show, I still have to run a company. I still have to be there for the Astro community. I still have to be a husband. I still have to be a dad. I still have to take care of myself. I still have to be a son. I still have to, you know, be a friend. I have to still be available. I still yeah. got to show up for life, right? And so I think the hardest part has just been balancing the time commitment that it requires to make a TV show and do everything else, but we've managed. You How know? do you manage the day-to-day? -day? I mean, that's a lot, right? I mean, all the way to the relationships, your wife, your family, the business, the show. Is there anything that you do on a day-to-day -day basis that allows you to do it all? Um, I have a very understanding wife, right? I, like, she, she is the most incredible woman in the world because she puts up with me being absent a lot, you know? And I, and, and I mean... It's hard, right? I, I, I can't say that um, I wouldn't like to be home more. I wouldn't like to not be on the road as much. Of course I would. I want to be. I, I love, I'm, in, I'm infatuated and I'm in love with my wife. Like I stare at her all day long. I could talk to her all day long, you know? Um, but she also knows that he has to go and do the thing he's going to do and she's not going to stand in my way or stop me from doing it. In fact, She's always going to push me to keep going, always going to push me to go and do the event. She's always going to push me to work harder. She's always going to be the person who says, I know this is what you want to do. Go do it, man. And so, like, I have this support from my people. I think the thing that I do is I don't feel sorry for myself. Mm. I go seven days a week, Austin. I haven't taken a day off. Yeah. I go seven days a week. Pace goes seven days a week. We work every day, 10 to 16 hours a day. Yep. Every day. It never stops. And, and I, I don't know anybody who does that. I don't know anybody out there who does it. Everybody I see takes a break. Everybody I see takes a holiday. Everybody I see does, you know, they, they, they have their moments of rest. We're not resting right now. Wow. We're going. And I think that you can see the results. You can. The results, the results speak for themselves. And, and you're in a season right now where you, in a way, have to do that. I mean, you yeah. don't have to, obviously, but... You're in, you're on, you know, you're there. I mean, like, it's like, you got to now, like, it's like, you got to do it, right? What is, what is like the end goal then for you? I mean, obviously you can't do seven days a week until you're 90. Mm -hmm. So then can what, I? Maybe, what I can. maybe you can, right? I don't know. Uh, assuming you can't, what is the end goal? I mean, what, what, what is all this for, right? I mean, yeah, it's a good question. I don't know that there's ever a destination. A thing I learned very early is that my idea of what's going to happen and God's idea of what's going to happen are going to be totally different and his idea is better. Mm. So the end goal doesn't really exist for me. I'm at my end goal. I've passed it. Wow. Right. I've done the things that I wanted to accomplish in life. I've had them. I got a TV show, bro. I got, uh, you know, million dollar, com I got, you know, hundred million dollar company. I've got franchises across the nation. I've got two beautiful daughters. I've got a beautiful wife. I've got um, my health, I've got a beautiful home. I've got my, I retired my parents. I made up for all the crap I did to them. I apologize to people whose hearts I've broken in the past. I've made amends with people. I've, wow. I've atoned for things I've, you know, that I'm not proud of. I've like literally, if I die today, I'm all good. That's awesome. I figure I, like, I, I, I'm, I'm right now. I'm like, this is all gravy. This is all bonus. You know, because I did it. I, I've, I'm past what my end goal was supposed to be. I'm far from exceeded it. So because I've done that, now I'm just like, what's next? I don't even care because this yeah. is all such a cool movie. You know, like I'm 
like I'm in I'm in sequels and if a, a, a six part miniseries I didn't even know was a you know gonna be a thing and so I don't know dude like it's yeah. is there an end goal I don't I don't think there is because if there was I'm past it yeah and you don't know where to lead now right I'm, I mean you knew you had the vision of Keegley I I can't imagine you ever knew with certainty you were gonna have a TV show. That was something that happened out of left field. If I had to take it, just a, sh a stab at it, right? So, like, who knows what happens out of left field next? It all—it's all coming out of left field, right? Or the field. The field, literally, the field. You got to do the Joe Dispenza thing. I'm telling you. Yeah. He's on another level. Like Joe is a guy where I was like, I. It takes a lot for me to be wowed by somebody, right? And sitting in that room for a week, right? Uh, did you get to get become personal with him, or did you not? Get to Joe interact Lewis House was there. Um, so I had multiple conversations with Lewis House, and Lewis House is just a phenomenal human being, just an incredible, humble, one of the most humble human beings I've ever met in my life. There's a lot of other really big names there, too. I was actually really surprised by the amount of people. Lewis House was sitting in the audience. Like, he wasn't, like, a speaker or something, right? So uh, that was really cool, you know. But, no, Joe, he, you know, when he's done with the session, he's immediately backstage. So there's a couple times where you shake his hand, he's out when you're doing the meditations and stuff like that. But we're talking seven days straight. And a lot of the days you're up, like the first meditation will start at 4.30 in the morning and it'll be a five hour meditation. So you'll go from 4.30 till 9.30 um, without taking a break. Like if you go to the bathroom, you can't come back in type of thing. And then you'll go all day till eight o'clock at night again. And then you'll do it for seven days straight. So he, it's like intense, like it's the real deal. You know, I never thought, if you would have told me on Monday, that I would have done a five hour meditation, like going into this, like that week, I'd have been like, dude, I don't so think, what, can, I, don't can think I, I ask can do you that. a question? Yeah. How, what happened there? Like, how do you feel after, after going there and did it do anything transformative for you? For sure. Yeah. You, you walk out of there a different human being, you know, it, it um, sometimes I think for me, at least I, you get caught up in, in all of it, right? You get caught up in the, in everything it, and you forget that you're the creator. You're the guy, like you're, you know, sometimes you, you, you see other people and you, um, you have setbacks and challenges and like it just life can be a lot of weight. Right. And so then you go to something like that. And it, I think it more than anything, it's just a wake up again. Like it's just you already knew the information in a way. And now it's like you just have sometimes you got to go hear it again. Right. And so for me, that's where I was. I was like, man, like I'm the creator. Like I'm the guy like there, there is like I create I've everything that you that you see in my life i created and i can continue to create it or i can i can be a victor or a victim right and so for me it was just also the ability to sit still um i've always struggled with that right and so to do a five hour meditation i mean i'd never even that was not even a thought of my imagination of, of being possible right mm -hmm. like sitting with my eyes closed for five hours straight like that that was an unbelievable did it feel like five hours or did it go it, by not at all. fast, right? No, it felt like maybe an hour. Because I'll meditate on a plane and I'll sit there for two hours and I'll just go through it. Yeah. And like, you know, Laura and Pace were asking me the other day, like, how the hell do you do that like that? Because they'll watch a movie or whatever and they, Laura will have the kids with her. But I'll like disappear and I'll just like, you know, and I'm like, I, I don't know. Time just doesn't Time's exist. Time's not the same. No. Time is not the same. You're one with everything, right? So you're one with time. You're one with your goals. You're, there is no separation in the quantum. So that's what Joe Dis that's Joe Dispenza is all about the quantum field, right? And in the quantum field, as you know, there's no separation. Everything's just one, right? So in, and, it's an energy soup. Exactly. So in the world that most people live in, that we live in, technically here on planet Earth, technically people think that there's separation, right? If I want that dress, I don't have the dress. I have to go get the dress. Like there, there's separation, right? Well, in the quantum, you're one with everything. So it's just, it, it, it's a very... You, you start to get into it, right? And it can be a very interesting um, path that you can go down, right? It's a little different than Tony Robbins where it's essentially the same information, but it is different information, right? Just uh, a little bit different. So uh, it was a phenomenal experience. I recommend yeah. that anybody do that. He's done 36 advanced retreats. I'm, I'm, I'm absolutely interested. They in sell that. out in 10 minutes every time. I, I've, I keep telling my team, hey, when you see the email come in, yeah. They 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 advertise it. So if you, he said at the end, basically you have to be subscribed to the newsletter. They'll tell you in advance. They they go live with it at like 11 p.m. or 11 a.m. Eastern Standard, and you have about 10 minutes. It'll sell out every time. So when they send you that email of like, hey, it's 11 11 a.m. on this day or whatever time that is, you have to be on your computer has to be open and you got to be ready to click the button. And that's what my uh, girlfriend did for me actually. So she was like one minute. Did she go with you? And she, she did not. She wanted to. But we were moving, and uh, we both had to take care of some Where stuff, was it so. this time? Uh, I went to Dallas. Fun. Yeah. Yeah, so a lot he's of got, I think he's got one in Costa Rica coming up. Cancun, Cancun. Costa Rica. Um, he does a lot of really cool ones. Um, Columbia. 
is one of them. That's neat. Yeah, that'd be really cool. I, I would like to do a more tropical one, I feel like. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, I know your time is extremely valuable. By the way, I really appreciate you Yours being is too, here. Yours too, bro. And uh, what what would you say? Like the one thing is, man, that you you know through everything you've learned, you know, if you were if you were to go today, right, and you could leave everybody behind with just one thing, one way to live their life, one way to, way to treat the people around them, one one piece of advice to live by for the rest of their life, what would that be? Man, there's so much that I would I would say is important, but. If if I had to if I had to pick one thing, meditate. It changed my life. Like for real, it was. It's what changed my life. It's what changed everything. It's where I got the downloads. It's where I got the ideas. It's how I, how I found my people. How I attracted things to myself. How I created. All of it. Like, uh, you got to go inside for it to come out outside. Everything that you're seeing right now is a reflection of what's going on inside of you. Wow. That's powerful. Everything you're seeing outside of your life right now. So if you're looking at your, you're sitting on a couch right now, and there's a cockroach that just went by you, and there's no food, and it kind of smells like doo-doo in your house, that's exactly what inside of you is like. Sorry, but that's what it is. So clean that up. And you can only clean it up through meditating. Because I, I, I was an alcoholic drug addict when I started. Wow. And, you know. Look at you now. I mean, you know, I could still be an alcoholic drug addict, but I'm a happier one. Yeah. You chose a different life. Yeah. You did. Yeah. And you did it, and me meditation is where it stemmed from. Yes, sir. Where can people find you, man? Where, if people want to reach out to you, they want to get involved, they want to join Astro Flipping, what's the best way for people to reach out to you? You can find me on my IG at J Damji at J D A M J I. Also, um, you'll see my ads. And um, beyond that, my YouTube channel is a great place to learn how to wholesale real estate. That's just youtube.com slash Jamil Damji. I love the most recent ag you did where you're tied to a tree and you have. Oh, like you a, saw that? I did. I, I just did that, that this morning with yeah. Bobby. It was fun, man. <laughs> I, I put like a that. gag ball in my mouth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's stupid. I like that a lot. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for watching the show. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure you drop a comment down below. Uh, let uh, Jamil know if you have any questions, if you need anything, reach out to him. If you're, wa or if you're listening anywhere, make sure you leave a five star review. Thank you for watching, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you for being here. Love you, bro. Appreciate you, bro.